Good evening, Cebu. Good evening, Philippines. It's open mic night tonight, but tonight we uh, deviate from our usual one-on-one -on -one format uh, to make way for this uh, uh, special monologue where I get to uh, editorialize. No? I have the chance, and I thank my TV for giving me the opportunity to explain my vote. I think as a democracy, uh, it is something that we should get used to, talking about politics. Uh, they say the taboo topics are politics, religion, and sex. Um, if we are to mature as a people, uh, it is, I think, incumbent upon us to get used to talking about the difficult uh, issues uh, that confront us as a people and as a nation. So, I'm voting for Rodrigo Duterte. And uh, I get a lot of questions, uh, especially on social media. Some of my relatives in Manila, uh, why are you voting for Duterte? You're Catholic, uh, you're, you like protocol, uh, you love uh, pomp and ceremony, propriety. Why are you voting for somebody like him, who is uh, the, the opposite of that? Um, I think it's because we've had so many leaders. We've had so many leaders uh, in the past who have tried to give us uh, their proposals for change. And we gave them the chance. You know? Formulaic, in other words. Rodrigo Duterte is beyond the formula. He is uh, different, at the very least. No? That's what you can say. He is very different. But uh, Rodrigo Duterte offers a different kind of change. Others talk about continuity. Others talk about improving things. But Rodrigo Duterte talks about systemic change. He talks about federalism. Federalism. And why am I a proponent of federalism? Because it's the only thing that can bring progress to the countryside, that can decongest Metro Manila and decentralize power. Imperial Manila has been taking us for a ride for a very long time now, and this has got to stop. Now, Am I sure that in six years, in 2022, that Rodrigo Duterte, that Mayor Duterte will be able to change things for the better, that he will be able to successfully amend the Constitution? Because it's a very difficult thing to do. Of course, I am not 100% sure. But if there's one man who can do that job, I think that's him. Why? He has two ingredients that are important in trying to pursue the change that I believe is necessary for our country to actually move forward. That's political will and political capital. Political will. Rodrigo Duterte, I think, is synonymous to political will. If, I bet you my life, you conduct a survey all over the country with political will as your keyword, and political uh, will is tested, that keyword is tested all over the country. Name three people, uh, the first three people who come to mind when you hear the word political will, and I bet you, my ass, it will be Rodrigo Duterte who will top that survey. Because he has become almost synonymous to political will. What he has done in Davao is proof that political will translates to better services on the part of government, better health care, health, a safer city, uh, almost zero corruption almost zero drugs. Maybe not, not completely safe, but at least safer. And that's what people believe. Because that, what they feel, what they believe, that they can walk, walk outside uh, you know, in the streets at night and they will not be mugged, it's not completely baseless. And the Davaoenos believe in that. That's why they support him. Can you imagine? Mar Rojas, who is from Rojas City, has very little support from people from Rojas City. On the other hand, Rodrigo Duterte, Almost nine, more than 90% of the Davaoenos believe in him. Isn't that proof that at least the people who know him, the people from his city, the city that he serves, believe in him? That is the testament to the kind of leadership and the kind of service he has rendered in that city. That the people he is serving believes in him. And because they believe in his brand of political will. So that's it. Political will. The second is political Capital. All over the country, you see that people are willing to do anything and everything just to support this candidate. Maybe because they're angry, or maybe because they're desperate, whatever the case may be, you see the willingness of people to fight for their candidate. 
to come up with makeshift campaign paraphernalia to print on, 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 on used sacks of rice. Come up with their own stickers. I've never seen a presidential campaign, and I have participated. This was my third presidential campaign as an adult. I've never seen people support a candidate like this. I'll give you an example. A friend of mine who works for the campaign of Duterte, and by the way, I am not officially part of his campaign. A friend of mine was here in Cebu uh, because uh, uh, his, uh, his, her father is an alumnus of University of San Carlos, and their uh, chemical engineering batch had, um, had a batch reunion. And while she was here, her mom was hospitalized, so they had to extend their stay. Throughout their stay, she was taking the taxi. One time, the taxi driver said, Mom, kinsa inong presidente? Duterte ka? Who is your president? Are you for Duterte? She was swearing a baller. And she said, Oh, no. Para ko ni Duterte. Ikaw. Oh, Duterte ka ayo, ma'am. Pirting pagka Duterte. And then he asks, May na lang, ma'am, no? He tells my friend, May na lang, ma'am, no? Duterte ka. And then my friend says, Of course. Kay naaman ko siyang kampanya, no? I worked with him in his campaign. And you know what the driver did? Immediately, he turns off he sh turns off the meter. He pawang ang metro. And my friend was, Why did you turn off your me metro nong? Nga no imumang gipawang. Ay, ma'am, ay lag bayad. Ay, pabayra lang ko nong. Let me pay, let me pay. Ay lang nong, ay lang nong. Ay lang ko pabayra. Ay, ay lang bayad, ma'am. And then my friend, No, mubayad lang ko nong. Ay lang ko, ay lang ko, ay lang ni, ay nani, pabayra lang ko. And the driver says, Sige lang, ma'am. Bay, ayaw lang bayad kay mo lang yun ni ako mahatag ni Duterte. Ma'am, do not pay because this is the only thing I can contribute to Duterte's campaign. That's one example. Another example. This is from a friend also. They were at a fruit stand and they asked the fruit vendor, who are you voting for for president? Duterte. And they, and they test the vendor. What if we give you, uh, we ask, we buy two boxes of apples from you. Two boxes of apples, but please vote for Mar Rojas. The vendor said, Ay na lang, ma'am. Ay na lang palit. Don't buy. Never mind. Because I'm for Duterte. So that is political capital. So Duterte has two ingredients that are necessary if we at least are to try to pursue charter change and push for a federal form of government. Systemic change. Two, political capital and political will. President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo has political will. It was proven that she has political will. But by the time that she wanted to pursue ch charter change, she had lost all the political capital. She was down to negative because of all the scandals that rocked her administration. So it became impossible for her to pursue, pursue charter change. But Duterte has two things that other candidates don't. That's why I believe he is capable of pursuing it. And this is a guy, mind you, that has not started talking about federalism just now, just as a campaign platform because he's running for president. This is a guy who has been talking about federalism for more than a decade. Sir Bobbitt, am I correct? Yes. Correct. So this is a guy who really believes in federalism. Why does he believe in it? Because this is someone who has seen, not just, not just seen the potential of the countryside to flourish, but he has seen it flourish under his leadership. And this is, a, this is countryside not just in Luzon. This is countryside in Mindanao, where there is a peace and order problem. So that's why he believes in federalism, because he, he has seen how it can work for the countryside. And some people say that it is easy, that Duterte is an easy, is a convenient, and is a lazy choice. On the contrary, it is not. I have a cousin who said that, and I take offense. I respect people's opinion, but I take offense when you say that my choice is easy and convenient. 
you have no right to tell us and to judge us and to pretend to know what our thought process is, what we take into account. I don't believe Duterte is perfect. I don't agree with death penalty. I never have and never will. We will never see eye to eye on that. But when you choose a president, you study a, bro a broad range of issues, a broad spectrum of issues. And then you just decide which are the ones that are most important. Not just to you, but to your country at a particular time. And so that's how I decided. And it, don't say that it's easy for me. Personally, I had to master the courage to talk to a good friend who is also running for president. I hope she doesn't mind that I mention it here because it is also a testament to her character that she still spoke with me even if she already knew what I was going to tell her. I'm talking about Senator Grace Poe. She was my first guest here on Open Mic. A good friend, supportive friend, and I must say, very magnanimous. She was still number one in the surveys when I texted her that I needed to talk to her. And she said, Mike, I'll be in Lapu-Lapu for our sortie in MEPSA. Drop by if you can. We'll be here until 8 o'clock. So I went. It's not easy to be able to explain these things to somebody who may well be president, who at that time was number one. But I had to muster the courage to explain to her why I needed to make this difficult choice. An easy choice would have been her. She's a nice person. I, think she, I still think she'd make a good president. I know her personally. She's a text away. But at this point, I'd like to make that protest vote. And I, I explained, it to, explained it to Senator Poe, and I thank her for understanding where I'm coming from. I tell her, I told her that I've been waiting for this for six years. I voted for President Noy Aquino in 2010, and that is the biggest and only regret I have in my life. And I've been waiting for six years for the opportunity to correct my error, my grave error of 2010. And I will never let this moment pass that I can finally correct that mistake. And so I need to make a protest vote. I don't think it can be, pre I don't think it can be Vice President Binay because he is still a friend and a creation of the Aquinos. It cannot be, of course, Secretary Mar Rojas because he's the official candidate. Senator Grace Poe respects and believes in the president. That's what I told her. Rodrigo Duterte, on the other hand, is the antithesis to Noynoy Aquino. And so he can very well represent my protest vote. Why do I need to make a protest vote? I will explain it after the short break because we have, uh, we have to pause for this break. Open mic, we'll be right back. We're back here in open mic. So, some of, some of the critics of Duterte and his supporters say that he is a lazy, convenient, and easy choice. Lazy, convenient, easy? Tell that to the people in Mindanao who for decades now have been making hard choices. Tell that to the poor of this country who are making hard choices every single day. Easy for you to say, you, the rich of Manila, my cousins in Manila, who studied in the Ateneo, who studied abroad, who work in your air-conditioned offices, whose problems are what? Your Uber hasn't arrived. You know what? I love you so much, but fuck you. Fuck you for thinking that you know better, that you know that you can represent the voice of the Filipino people. You do not know how the Filipinos uh, are, what, they're go th what they are going through, just because, just because uh, you have your immersions in Ateneo doesn't mean that you already know how it is to be poor, how it is to be suffering. Try to go out and actually be, you know, befriend the poorest of the poor, the vendors in the market. How hard they work. For what? Not to buy a phone? Not to buy Starbucks? No. I don't know what Carlos Aldran is talking about. But for their meal. To make sure that their children get to go to school. For their health care. Try to talk to them. That's why, you know, people are not, they're not mad. They're desperate. We are so desperate. And Duterte is not a lazy, convenient, and easy choice. He is a difficult choice. Very difficult. Why? Because he is 
not your average person who runs for president. We have to look past the imperfections and see the possibilities that he offers. So it's not easy. Easy is formulaic. Easy is someone who tells you what you want to hear, who tells you continuity, who tells you dang matuwid, what hagwash. That's easy. And easy for you to say because you live comfortable lives. Continuity? What do you want to continue? Government has been operating an autopilot for the last six years. Autopilot. If you think that the economy is doing well, I'm sorry, Tita Winnie, Winnie Masada, I respect her, and she's a good economist. But why look at the last six years? When you study economy, you study not just the last six years. You study the last 30 years. So you see the bigger trends. Why just the last six years? Of course, you want to study the last six years if you just want to endorse one candidate representing you know, the last six years. Study the last 30 years after martial law. Study the last 30 years. And you will see that the upward trajectory that our, our economy started to grow, not under this president, but under the former president, whether you like her or not. That we grew even, even in the midst of a global financial crisis. But when, when the major economies throughout the world were floundering and faltering, ours actually grew in 2009. So the upward trajectory started there. That is the trend. Why? Did we say continuity? Did we say continuity? Did we shout continuity uh, you know, uh, when it was time for GMA to step down? No. Of course you shout continuity now because it's the oligarchs are who want that. You greedy oligarchs. <laughs> you. Economy. GDP, GDP, exchange rate, why don't you bend over and pull out of your assets, your facts and figures, and your GDP, and smell the shit. Pang tuwad mo diha, o ito sa mga lubot, ang GDP, kaya di na nila makaon. It is not inclusive, why? Because the last six years, the last six years that you've been proud of, has not been, the growth has not been inclusive. It has not been inclusive. Why? Because it has waited, it has, you know, Noy has wasted the opportunity to expand the economy further by investing supposedly in infrastructure. Noy Noy Aquino cost GMA a lost decade? No. The last six years was a lost opportunity. We could have expanded further to what? Almost 10%. And it could have trickled down to the poorest of the poor had he invested in infrastructure. But why did he withhold? One wonders. Why did, we do, why did he withhold on infrastructure spending and just started to spend on infra in the last year? Why? Is it because it's almost election year? It's almost election? We know too well, we Filipinos know too well that every time it's about to be election, even in the local government, roads that are not, that uh, don't need to be fixed, they fix. We know that. So why do we still wonder why Pinoy withheld, you know, the, um, the enormous funds we have? They shame people, they shame professionals. Kim Inares shames professionals, doctors, you know, collecting taxes. Taxes that what? That they just hold on to? They don't even build what needs to be built? The infrastructure that would have supported and expanded the progress that uh, he has been bragging about? The progress that he has... Been the progress that started PGMA, but he has been taking credit for. Nakpo, mga buang na. And then the oligarchy. Kamo, mga dato, mapiting dato ah. How much? How much money do you need? Mga dalo ninyo, mga yawa mo. And then now you try to manipulate the situation with the media that you control, giving us bullshit news, leading news. I was there when Duterte, when Duterte uh, explained when he when he said some uh, when he explained about his position on on uh, uh, the comments of Australia. He never said that he was gonna sever ties with Australia and America. He said if they don't like me, then maybe they wanna sever ties if he win if if I win. That's what he said, and he said it in jest as a joke. Either you're stupid or you're really deliberately trying to manipulate the situation. So. This mainstream media are controlled by the oligarchy. We've had it with you. And we're on to you. That's why now you say, people say that Duterte is Teflon, that no, no issues stick, 
that no matter what uh, they throw at him, no matter the muck and mud that's leveled at him, people don't believe. Maybe it's not so much Duterte, but it's the people believing that we've been, take, we've been taken for a ride for far too long and that enough is enough. They say you oligarchs are afraid. Are you better? Because your days are numbered. People have had it with you and enough is enough. You better watch out. Hapit na ni Mahuman. Magtiwas ta. Now, if you want to cheat, well, cheat at your own risk. So to all those who are planning to cheat and subvert the will of the people in, uh, in, uh, on, on Monday, whoever you are, whether you're Noyna Aquino or Comelec or Mar Rojas or Lenny Rubredo, remember that electoral sabotage is a non-bailable offense. And the passion people have now can just erupt. Who knows? Baka igilutin pa mo. Okay, magpatay good. Manikas mo. Continuity. What have you done? For example, the, the hypocrisy that pervades now, the hypocrisy of this daang matuwid, where everyone who is a political opponent is persecuted and prosecuted, but everyone who is a friend is protected, whose, whose tenure is, is perpetuated. Honrado, etc., etc. Abaya. This is, the, this is, what do you want to continue? Mama Sapano? The Hong Kong has hostage crisis, which started this whole thing with China? Hong Kong hostage crisis, when Noino Aquino, the brilliant mind of Noino Aquino, bereft of Solomonic wisdom, divided DILG, interior, and local government. Interior with, uh, with uh, Puno. And local government with uh, Robredo, the late Jesse Robredo, it resulted in disaster. See, no Solomonic wisdom. Disaster not just because Chinese uh, Hong Konger, you know, the Hong Kongers died, but because the world saw the ineptitude and the insincerity of our government. And you wonder why China bu China bullies us. China bullies us because they feel they, that we deserve it. Unfortunately, it's because we have a leader who just smiles like a raging sociopath even when he's not supposed to. And then now you have corrupted Lenny Rubredo. Lenny Rubredo, who rides the bus, brags about riding the bus, and spends, what, 200, 300 million to show the world that she rides a bus. I don't understand why that's, that, that cannot be, that, that, I don't understand why some people cannot see that. Anyone who says that they're humble, that, they're, that anyone who brags that they're humble is not humble. And this is a person, this is a lady, I wonder, Miss Lenny Robredo, why didn't you ever ask for an investigation to get to the bottom of your husband's death? Your husband was DILG secretary. He was not well-loved by the administration, by President Aquino. It was not a secret that he was bullied by the, you know, by the influential, the most influential cabinet members close to the president. His plane crashes, and it was in the news, unidentified men ransacked his office. And you think, there's no foul play? Maybe there is none, but at the very least, ask for an investigation. You never did. Worse, you are now vice president of that party that bullied your husband. And now, all that you can think of, all that you can say is Marcos and, 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 and Robredo. What kind of Ouija board politics are you playing? That it's all about dead people? This is a candidate who invokes the spirits every time she campaigns. Invokes the spirit. Why? It's either she bashes the dead Ferdinand Marcos, or she glorifies her dead husband. Have we had it, haven't we had enough of this kind of dramatics? Use, for me, in my book, anyone who uses dead people is crass and does not deserve public support. Koy batasan, patay na na, papahuayan na. Sus. Simplicity, m****. Mama Sapano, Yolanda, MRT, LRT, airports, laglagbala. This is the one, this is the, this is the brand of leadership that you want to continue? And you call us unthinking. You call us lazy, that our choice is lazy. 
because the economy is doing well anyway. You know what? A year before Gloria Macapagal Arroyo stepped down, it was already predicted that whoever takes over the reins of government will reap the benefits of the policies, the unpopular policies that she championed. So even if it was, even if it was not Noynoy, the economy would have grown. That's what you call momentum. And then you give him, give him credit for the credit ratings upgrade? Remember that just, just uh, two or three months after Noynoy assumed office, there was already a credit rating upgrade. So don't tell me he got a credit rating upgrade just after two, three months. That's not how they rate things. It's several, it's several years, several quarters. That's how they study you know, the performance, the credit performance of the country. And then you give him credit right away. See, no, I'm thinking. So now I have to pause again for another break. Open mic, we'll be right back. Back here on open mic, silent majority. Now they claim they're the silent majority. Silent, you're not silent. You keep on fighting with me on Facebook. You keep on sending me private messages, telling me, uh, warning me, threatening me to boycott our family business. Is that silent? Is that decente? Decente ba na? Majority? Where on earth did you get majority? Where? Where? What kind of arithmetic are you using? The surveys all say between Duterte, Poe, Binay, and Miriam, that's like over 80%. So your candidate barely has 20%. So what are you saying that you have majority? You're delusional, just like your president and his candidate. And don't say you're silent because you are far from it. This is mind conditioning. Mind conditioning to once again bamboozle the people into believing that your candidate is strong. diha. Mind conditioning will not work anymore. And now you're saying silent no more because you want to fight? <laughs> because you can't take it anymore? Okay, fine, let's fight. I'm okay with fighting on social media, but when you go to my Facebook, I will block you. If you can't engage in meaningful dialogue, I'll block you right away. And don't say that there's no democracy. There's no democracy on my Facebook. It's my timeline, my timeline, my post, my rules. In my Facebook, I am king, queen, judge, jury, executioner, assassin, soldier, everything. So what I do with my post, if I delete it, you can come up with the longest post, then I delete it. That's my business. Write about me in your timeline. But don't say you're silent, and don't say you're majority. Campaign for your candidate. Campaign for decente whatever. But for me, how is it decente? How is it ibalik sa decente? When not too long ago, when people were dying in Tacloban, in Leyte, in the aftermath of Yolanda, your candidate played politics at the worst possible time. How is that decent? But no, for you, a, a rape joke, if it was a rape joke even, is something you cannot look past because it is so indecent. He has no integrity. Never mind that he did the job at that time and, the host, you know, and, and put his life on the line to save hostages. Never mind. For you, it doesn't matter. For you, what matters is what the candidate says. You know what? You can be likened to people who say that uh, theory is better than practice. Theory is more important to you than the actual thing. That's the kind of, that's the kind of mentality that you have. And that's, for what's, that's what's decent for you? Again, go back to Yolanda. We were not there. I'm sure most of you tried to rally you know, whatever support we can. Donations, people in the United States, we're calling them, trying to ask them to donate money in cash and kind, whatever. Because we felt for the victims of Yolanda. Most of us were not even there. But Marojas was there. He saw them suffering. Yet he played politics. He wanted to, he wanted Alfred Romualdez, whether you like him or not, because he's a Romualdez, but he is elected, he's the elected mayor of Tacloban. He wanted him to resign so he can take over from the very, from the very start. Of course, he cannot, he could, Maro has could not have been appointed to DILG because Robredo was there. So he had to settle for DOTC where he fucked up big time. Just look at your internet. Just look at your airports. Just look at your MRT and your traffic. See? The, all the things that are wrong with this country, you can point to Maro has. 
And still, he is the intelligent choice. See? Anyway, he could not, been, could not, been, could not have been appointed to the ILG, so he was appointed to the OTC. Finally, Jesse Robredo dies, and Lenny Robredo smiles with everyone else in that, in that creepy, creepy picture. And then Maro has the, is there, the ILG. Within months, those who have pledged to support uh, Binay or other, you know, prospective presidential candidates in both rich cities and provinces were summarily suspended. Gwen Garcia, etc., etc. Six months for usurping, usurping uh, the authority of the vice governor for a fund that was or originally la it was originally the governor's office's fund. Six months, but there was a candidate, an LP person, an LP uh, official, local government official, who was accused of uh, attempted murder. One month. One month suspension for, for attempted murder for an LP official and Gwen Garcia, supposedly usurpation of authority and the, and the person who is, uh, who, whose authority she supposedly, be, supposedly usurped was already dead six months because it was about to be election. So at the, the moment he, he uh, assumed the role of secretary of the DILG, he was already trying to move things around to clear all blockages en route to 2016. Because, well, Pinoy got, uh, you know, Pinoy prevailed upon him and the Aquino family prevailed upon him in 2010 and stole the, the nomination from, from him, of the Liberal Party. But see, that has, that has been his modus ever since he became president, uh, secretary of the DILG. And then, and then he did it again in, 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 uh, in Tacloban. And he was demanding that Alfred resign from his post. Why? For, for a national government to take over? Excuse me, Mr. Rojas. If two barangays are affected, the city is involved. If two cities or, uh, or localities are involved, it's the province. If two provinces, it's the region. If two or more regions are involved, it's national. Three regions are involved. Central Visayas, Eastern and Western Visayas. Naturally, the, 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 the national government can come, come, can come in and intervene. So why were you forcing that? Why were you trying to ease Alfred out of the picture? Playing politics at the worst possible time and people not only were dead, and pe more people were dying. Dicente Bayan? Dicente? When, 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 when your president, Aquino, Quangul ka? 2,500 because he was embarrassed? Because he gave a very low estimate? They sacked the chief of police who gave a higher estimate. Oh, ano ba nangyari? More people died. More than 8,000 died. And until now, they refuse to acknowledge that more than 8,000 people died. That is a dishonor to the people who died. They are nameless. Some of them have not even been found. And you cannot even acknowledge, at least in terms of number, that 8,000 died just because you want good PR? Bad luck to you. All the bad luck in the world, I wish. For the Liberal Party, Pinoy. And I hope you get, you know, you rat in jail after your term. Wakay respito. Wakay respito sa nga matay. And more people died. We had a cousin who died, Rosabel Romualdez. Her, her child also died. But did you see that Romualdez says, calling for a press conference, making a spectacle out of themselves, and trying to, you know, uh, uh, use or exploit the death of a loved one? To gain, in, uh, you know, to gain some political mileage? No! Because that is your game plan. That is your playbook. That is the LP playbook. So, press, come on. If we don't vote for you because we're tired of it, oh, deal with it. Because we're tired of this, this, you know, this madness using dead people. You call Lenny Robredo, pag matngon, stop using your dead husband. Let, let him rest in peace. You did not even ask for an investigation to his death? And then now you're, si Jesse, si Jesse, si Jesse. Puro na lang si Jesse. Or if not, you're attacking Ferdinand Marcos. You know what? At least, Bongbong Marcos, whether you like him or not, because he has the credentials, he's actually the most qualified if you look at the positions he has, he has occupied. He was governor. He was a, a, a congressman. He was a senator. He is a senator. And he all, you know, nearly single-handedly is responsible for killing the unconstitutional Bangsamoro Basic Law. 
Can you imagine a Marcos defending the Cory Constitution? At least that's that's Bongbong. And you know what? Whether you like Bongbong or not, you want and uh, you know he is the he's the most qualified for the job. He is the most prepared. More than Lenny. More than your precious Lenny. More than your Saint Lenny. Keba mo nga no. You know why? Because at least Bongbong does not exploit the dead. You LP people, you holier than thou hypocrites, who use the Bible and who moralize and pontificate and tell us we're sinners and that you're the only ones going to heaven because we're supporting a candidate like Duterte. You invoke the Ten Commandments because thou shall not kill. Well, who's, I'm, no, who's very sure that he killed someone? He likes to joke about things, haven't you learned? And then you use the Ten Commandments against Binai also, thou shall not steal. Well, big news. The Ten Commandments also says, honor thy father and thy mother. So, you know what? Isn't it enough that the whole world, history, has judged Ferdinand Marcos, has vilified him and his family for more than 30 years? That's enough. You want, you, you want his only son to also throw him under the bus just for, for political mileage? I think, on the other hand, the flip side to it, it's a, it, it, is a, it is a sign of character that even if it is popular to attack Ferdinand Marcos, his son does not give in to the attacks, even if it would have gained him votes, because it would have. Unlike that, that, that daughter of that Peruvian uh, dictator, who, you know, who is now getting so much, uh, uh, who is getting a lot of votes because she is attacking her father. That is a sign of character. Would you want a vice president like that? He just has the misfortune of having the Marcos surname. Don't vote for him if you don't want to vote for him. But don't moralize and pontificate and say, you know, that your candidate has integrity. I, I'm sorry, but the chief of staff of Lenny is my classmate and she's a good person. But she was the one who posted that, that viral, that viral uh, picture of her waiting for a bus in uh, along Edsa. And she was also the one who posted that picture of her, you know, trying to uh, avoid the, the red carpet at the sauna. Now, of all people, it's the chief of staff who would know and who would respect if her principal is truly humble, sincere, and private. And she will, not, she will not violate that. But it went viral because it was her chief of staff who posted it. And now it's being used in campaign ads. You know, Oko. So you ride the bus and then you become qualified to be vice president? And then you say every single time you can that you are simple and humble and sincere? Samana. But you know, election season is upon us, and in a few days we will be electing our president, our president and vice president. There is much talk overseas that uh, there is cheating, that uh, supposedly the names that appear in, in the receipt are not the names of the people they voted in their ballots, that they voted for in their ballots. Teddy looks in posted it in his Twitter, and I talked to some people in the United States, and it really does, you know, it's, hap it's been happening in New York and in California. And some people are discouraged to, to go out and vote. No, but please, don't be discouraged. Still, go out and vote. Because even if they cheat, let us try to overwhelm their effort to cheat by the sheer number, by the sheer volume of our votes. So don't don't uh, not vote. Go and vote. Go out and vote. Don't get discouraged. Okay? Before I close, I'd like to encourage all of you to continue with the debate. They say don't fight with your friends. No, let's fight. Sometimes you have to fight. Just don't take it personally. Let's debate. Let's not be afraid, you know, to, to disagree with our friends. And to sometimes end, you know, end up fighting and shouting at each other. We are in a democracy. We are an immature democracy, but we cannot progress and mature as a democracy if we are afraid to ask the hard questions. So let us ask the hard questions, and more so, let us attempt to answer them. We don't have all the answers, but let us engage in a meaningful dia dialogue and discourse. Do not be afraid to debate. But what personal May 9, Rodrigo Duterte. This has been another episode of Open Mic. This is Mike Lopez. 
Good night, Godspeed, and God bless the Philippines.